Just get everyone to keep moving towards the back there, guys, so we get everyone on. And also, if you got a backpack, just to put it between your feet, just so we've got a bit more room for everyone. Okay, we've got two more. Snuggle up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> back up. Back up. Okay, watch your back shoulders on this door here. Car one, mop them clear with four and six passengers, two six. How was everyone today? Good. Good stuff. First off, tramway for everybody? Nope. Yeah? No one wants to go to heights? Yep. No? I think we've got a few lies in the car. Well, welcome to the Jasper Tramway, everybody. My name's Trent. I'll be your guide for the way up today. So we're starting an elevation here at the lower terminal at 1,300 metres or 4,300 feet. Trip to the top is going to take us about seven and a half minutes. And by the time we get up there, we'll have reached an elevation of approximately 7,500 feet or 2,300 metres. So we'll be gaining our elevation by approximately 1,000 metres. 2010 marks the 46th anniversary of the tramway. It was built back in 1964 by the German firm PHB. It took approximately five months to build. Jasper National Park is also the largest and most northerly of all the Canadian Rocky Mountain National Parks. It sits just under 11,000 square kilometres in size and is also under the World UNESCO Heritage Site. Some of the mountain ranges that you'll be able to see from the tram today, if you start out by looking to my left or to the far west, you'll see the Yellowhead Range. The Yellowhead Range straddles the Continental Divide which borders British Columbia and Alberta. So what that means is all the snow from the west side of the range flows into the Pacific Ocean, all the snow from the east flows into the Arctic. The next range you'll see at the back left hand corner of the car there is the Victoria Cross Range. Most of the peaks on this range are named after men who served in the war with the Commonwealth Forces and were awarded the Victoria Cross Medal, which was an award given for gallantry and bravery in the face of the enemy. One of the peaks on the range, however, that's not named after a recipient of the Victoria Cross is Pyramid Mountain, which is the last peak on the right hand side of the range, directly at the back of the car there. One that's got its peak just covered in by a cloud there, but if it clears away when you get to the top, you'll see how it's shaped like a pyramid, which is where it gets its name from, Pyramid Mountain. And then it's also the largest peak on that range as well, with an elevation of just under 2,800 metres. The next range out of the back right hand corner of the car is the Collin Range. The Colin Range was named after Colin Fraser, who was the last custodian of the Jasper House back in the 1800s. And the final range out to the right hand side here, or to the east, is the Moline Range. The first peak you see on the left there is Signal Mountain. It was named Signal Mountain because it was the old fire lookout for the National Park, but ironically the lookout burnt down. Just going to have the tower as well guys, so you can walk around a little bit, nothing to worry about though, it's a bit more fun on the way down. Just to the right of Signal Mountain, you also see Mount Takara, the slightly larger peak, with an elevation of just under 2,700 metres. The range that we're on at the moment is the Trident Range, and we're heading up Whistler's Mountain, which uh, gets its name from the uh, Hori Marmot, which is one of the many wildlife species you'll see up here through the warmer months, and it's from the whistling sound that the marmot makes. Also, if you look directly out the back of the car there, you also see the town of Jasper, shaped as a J. The population in Jasper normally sits at around 5,000 through the winter, but through the summer months can boom out to approximately 20,000 with all the seasonal staff and tourists starting to come through. On the right hand side of the town you'll also see the Athabasca River, which is the longest river in Alberta, approximately 1,300 kilometres in length. It begins 100 kilometres south of Jasper in the Columbian ice fields, which is where it gets its bluish greenish colour from because it's glacial fed. From there, it runs south to north into the Arctic Ocean via the Slave and Mackenzie Rivers. And you can also do whitewater rafting tours on the river also. On the other side of the river there, you'll also see three lakes. The first one there is Lake Beauvais, which means beautiful green lake. On the right-hand side of the lake, you'll also see the Jasper Park Lodge and also the golf course. 
golf course got rated in the top 10 most scenic golf courses in the world. Every hole at the course faces a different mountain. So if there's any keen golfers in the car, you might want to get out there and play a few rounds while you're in town. The two lakes just start to the north of Bow Bear there are Lake Annette and Lake Edith. Both those lakes have beaches, so really popular spots during the warmer months on a nice sunny day to get out there and uh, have a bit of a swim or just sit in the sand and relax in the sun. Today's probably not going to be the warmest day for it, but if you're in town for a few more days, hopefully the weather picks up. The water out there is actually not too bad. I went for a swim there the other day and it's not as cold as what it has been, I can tell you that much. If you look directly out the back of the tram there, you'll also see a few more lakes. The one furthest from us, just below Pyramid Mountain there, is Pyramid Lake, with Pyramid Island sitting in the middle. And just below that we have Patricia Lake. Both those lakes have boat rentals, so, so through the summer months you can always head up there and hire a kayak or canoe and uh, paddle around the lake for a few hours and just enjoy the sun, enjoy the scenery. The next lake as we make our way down, the long skinny one through the middle there, is Cavern Lake which is also a fairly popular spot for fishing. The two small lakes just below Cabin are Marjorie on the right, Hibernia on the left. And then if you keep going to the left there, you've got Caledonia Lake, shaped like a carrot, and Dorothy Lake out on top of the valley there. So heaps of hiking trails around all the lakes there, guys. So if you're into your hiking and looking to get a good look at the National Park while you're in town, I highly recommend that you get out there and uh, hit up some of the trails and have a good look around. Also, there's Valley of the Five Lakes at the right-hand side or to the east, which you can also do on mountain bikes as well. So if you prefer it with a bit more of an adrenaline rush, a bit more fun with it, you can always hire mountain bikes from in town, which is always good fun. So up here at the upper terminal, guys, we've got the boardwalks on both sides of the building. So make sure you get out there and take as many photos as you can, go for a bit of a stroll around. There's also the hiking trail that heads up to the summit, which is 1.2 kilometres long. So at a moderate to intermediate level and most of the snow has cleared away from the trail as well so if you're into your hike I can highly recommend that you get up to the top there it will take you a further 200 meters in elevation so you'll be sitting at just under 2500 meters so again some pretty good views up there also got the uh, restrooms and the gift shop here on the lower level and if anyone's hungry or thirsty wants a hot drink or enjoys a cold beer at this time of the day the tree line restaurants always sitting up top as well so our tram's going down every nine minutes at the moment. So whenever you're ready to come back down, just come into the lobby and uh, just speak to one of the operators and we'll be able to fix you up on the next available flight down, all right? Has anybody got any questions at all? No? Not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ。これ
米でかアメリカで近いでかわかんないですけど。<笑><笑>